Hello, Brad Schelke here at Conversations with Mormons. This is part five of Opening Eyes to Life. Last week I shared more of my conversation with an 80-year-old Mormon who declared boldly that we should never do evil, but would not evaluate herself based on that same standard. Why did she resist so hard evaluating herself by what she said was true? It's simple. Her pride tricked her to live from her head instead of her heart. God created her to live from her heart and the good expectations He had written in her soul. God's good expectations are all about good relationships. Human pride impairs that understanding and tricks us to see life informationally instead of relationally. We all crave to be right, and our security often relies upon it. Should we seek this rightness informationally or relationally? In other words, should we try our hardest to be right or simply relax and trust to be right? Our pride tricks us to play the head game of trying to be more right than others. This way of thinking is competitive and allows us to separate from those we see as wrong. This way is all about personal rightness, which is just another name for self-righteousness. This way views life as a battle between being right and being wrong. That older Mormon kept inviting me to join her head game of competitive rightness. If I joined her, then likely the conversation would have gone nowhere or degenerated into a debate. Instead, I kept working to open her eyes using God's way. God's way is for us to seek the security we crave relationally and then lead others to join us. Instead of trying to be right, we trust to be in a right relationship with God. Because we always have a right relationship with God, we will have right relationships with those around us as well. Instead of trying to avoid being wrong or trying to point out how wrong others are, we remember our right relationship and then we can be truly humble and not be drawn into the prideful arguments about who is most right. The alternative to being right is not being wrong. It is being humble. Because our right relationship with God, being the most right no longer matters. Ponder that a moment. Rewind the video if you need. The opposite of being wrong isn't being right. It's being humble. True humility is a matter of the heart. It's the way of trusting God's good expectations written in our soul. This way is full of surprises because it brings us face to face with God's good expectations, which are embodied only and fully in Jesus Christ in His flawless humanity. When we see Jesus and measure ourselves compared to His flawlessness, all sense of competitive rightness disappears. All desire to point out how wrong others are disappears. You may be more right than I am, but compared to Jesus, you're not right. No one is. When we compare ourselves and others to Jesus, we move from the head to the heart. We lose all hope in our own rightness. And since we need and crave rightness, our eyes open to God's surprise to Jesus has all our hope for being right. The gospel is that Jesus, the only flawless person, died in our place and rose from the dead to offer his death and life as all of the rightness we need. That is truly a secure position for us. My style of witnessing is an invitation to Mormons to leave their head game of competitive rightness and join me in living from the heart by opening their eyes to God's expectations written in their soul. To become a Christian is simple. It's the experience of abandoning all hope in self and trusting Christ in His sin-bearing death. To do so holding nothing back is to receive the life, heart, and mind of Christ. This is what it means to be born from above. This makes Jesus in His perfection to be all our rightness every moment, every day, and forever. To live as a Christian means to live from the heart and mind of Christ. In the past three weeks, I've witnessed to well over 100 Mormons. Not once did I say they were wrong or I was right. Neither did I tell them to stop playing the head game of competitive rightness. Some did tell me I was wrong, and some tried to bait me into their competitive head games. But I never took the bait. I stayed focused on living from the heart and invited them to hear their own heart through my simple questions that helped them discover the difference between trying to be right and trusting to be right. Surprise and joy often filled their faces as they discovered God's good expectations hidden in their soul. I gave them nearly all an assignment to pray that day something like the sinner's prayer. I modeled it for them. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place to take care of all my sins without my help and for calling me to trust him. Nearly all said they would do it. Nearly all thanked me for the conversation. Do you ever get in arguments with Mormons about who's right? What about with fellow Christians? Have these arguments ever left a bad taste in your mouth? Have you ever wished for a way to have real heart-to-heart -heart conversation? Next week, we'll explore how love reveals the way to move from our head to our heart. Until then, please join me in thanking God for sending Jesus Christ to die in your place to show what true rightness is. Welcome to the conversation.